Hi, Steve from Steve's Makerspace. In this video, I'm going to show you how I took random images from the internet and turned them into art. This is very similar to the satellite images that I showed in my last video where I turned that into art. In this one, I'm taking two different images and meshing them together before I do the process of replacing the colors and turning them into tiles. I won't spend a whole lot of time on this video because the process is almost the same as my maps program. There's a link in the description if you want to play with this in your browser. This one will work out the box because there's no API key. Apparently when you get a random image from Unsplash, you don't need an API key. So the first thing it does is it grabs two random images, puts them together, and makes them the same size. So you can see the cabs quite clearly, but there's also a bed here with a radio. Now I'll put in the replace colors. Unfortunately, it'll be a different image. So here's an example of two images that have come together and then the colors are replaced. This is coming partly from this image. Notice this beak right here and you'll see that beak right here. And then this image, notice this ear and this pillow and you can see the ear here and the pillow here. So it is using both images, but I'll show you in this example, here's a regular image. Here I'll apply some blur. I can make it even more blurry. Now let's try some posterizing and that's what happens. And if I do both blur and posterize, it'll look like that. Two images with blurring and posterizing. Now we'll make tiles out of it. Two images with blurring, posterizing, and made into tiles. That one's quite nice. And then we also have the option of doing some rotating. So there's everything from before plus rotating the tiles and I've also got some white space in there. So I'll talk a little bit about some of the code stuff in a second, but if you've liked this video so far, you can give it a like. And there's a link in the description if you wanna play with this. You don't need to know any code. Click the link, hit the start button, and you can click on the canvas to get new art. So the first thing I wanna say is I did try a number of APIs trying to get them to work. I am not an expert in APIs and it was uh, difficult. I finally found something written by Anne Laurie uh, for P5JS getting an API code from Unsplash. So I've credited her for this little bit of code right here. One thing that Anne Laurie's code was doing was putting the URL in the console and I discovered that this is a hot link so I can click on this and it takes you to the original photo so that is very nice and I've implemented that with my map art. I'm supposed to credit the photographer on the image and I really wanted to do that unfortunately when you grab a random image from Unsplash it doesn't give you any of the photographer information and I tried really hard to get that information but I could not figure it out. I'll put a little more information about that in a pinned comment in case you have any ideas to help me out. Getting two different images to load was a little bit tricky. What I did was I did image number equals zero at the start. And in the preload, if image number equals zero, then I'll go ahead and load the color table and also choose a random background. With the maps, I was doing all black background, but I decided I wanted to vary it some, so now it's going from zero to 100 background. Then I fetch the random image, print the image to the console, and then when the image is gotten, then I go to this wait for element function. So if I've only gotten one image up to this point, then we're gonna change image to image two we're gonna change the image URL to image URL two. We add one to the image number, and then we're gonna go back to preload to get another image. But I couldn't go straight to the preload too quickly because it would get the same image. I had to wait one second in order to get a different image. So this set timeout of a thousand is waiting a second before it goes to preload. Then I'm looking at the two images that I've gotten and I'm getting an average width for the images and an average height for the images because I want them to be combined. Now that means both images are probably gonna be distorted. One is gonna be stretched, the other one is gonna be squeezed, but it doesn't really matter to me because I'm distorting this and making it into art. I'm just looking for the shapes basically of the two images. 
Then I'm calculating the aspect ratio of my window space and the aspect ratio of my average image. And then I resize both images so that it fits into the available space. Now I create my canvas based on the resized images. Then I'm gonna display both images on my canvas, but right before I do that, I'm going to tint. Tint is giving the images some alpha. This first number is for white, uh, which is required if you're gonna do just alpha with no change in the color of the images. And the second number is the alpha. So 255 would be full alpha, 120 is half alpha. Mostly from this point forward are things I've already talked about. The replacing of the colors I talked about in my last video about the maps. And then the tiling I talked about in my two tiling videos. So I'll leave links to those videos in the video description. Now at the bottom here I've got this text right here and this is part of the URL. And this is how I'm searching for this photo using Google in order to find out who the photographer is. It's a pain in the butt. but uh, I needed to figure out how to do this instead of putting the entire URL because that was taking up a whole lot of space and was unnecessary. So this part right here, substring, is how I'm grabbing that part of the URL. This is going in 28 spaces into the text and then taking the next 60 characters of the text. Also, when I was doing the entire URL before, I had to figure out how to wrap the text uh, so that it didn't go off the side of the picture. So this is what you need to do to wrap text, text wrap uh, by character. You can also do text wrap by word. So that's all I wanted to show you in the code. I think I'm going to take a break from the tiling stuff because I think I've been using it as a crutch. I'm also uh, not going to do any more sampling of images off the internet. I uh, think I'm done with that for a little while. It's time to move on to some other topic altogether, but I don't know what it is yet. Anyway, if you like this video, you can give it a like. Consider subscribing to the channel. Ring the bell for notifications. Comments are always welcome. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye now. Steve's Makerspace.